Good morning. morning. Welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Kevin McReynolds, and it's my pleasure to to extend a warm welcome to all of you, both our guests and visitors and our members alike, on this very special day today. Um, You may have noticed the purple flowers up on the altar today, and you know it's the first of the month. Um, It's not LWML Sunday. We're a month away from that. But it's a very special day where we celebrate the service of women in the church as we install our new deaconess, Andrea Gates, into her office here at Redeemer Lutheran Church. We'll be doing this at both services today. And uh, I also want to remind you that between services today, we will be celebrating uh, her arrival with a uh, cake reception in the Fellowship Hall, and I'll give you a chance to visit with her and Gary and, uh, and share your warm wishes of welcome to them. So. I look forward to, uh, to our services today. We have lots to do. We have the word, we have the sacrament, we have an installation today. So uh, it's going to be a busy service. But remember, we don't have to get off to Sunday school um, right afterwards. We just have the cake reception. So I guess that gives us a little bit of time today as well. So with that, I'd like to get us started. So we begin our, opening, uh, we begin our service with our opening hymn, number 908, Lord, open now my heart to hear we sing. make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our service continues with the intro appointed for today from Psalm 51. We speak these words responsively, whole verse by whole verse. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. 
Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation, blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O God, the source of all that is just and good, nourish in us every virtue and bring to completion every good intent that we may grow in grace and bring forth the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. Our Old Testament reading today is from Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2 and 6 through 9. Now, now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the just decrees that I am teaching you, and do them, that you may live and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word that I command you, 
nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? And what great nation is there that has statues and just decrees so righteous as all this law that I set before you today? Only take care and keep your soul diligently lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Our epistle lesson is from Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God praying at all times in the spirit and with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite the congregation to please rise as we join together singing the Alleluia in verse. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Hear now the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside the person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart, but his stomach, and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated for our sermon hymn number 664.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you all from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning's message comes from the Old Testament lesson you heard read just a moment ago from Deuteronomy chapter 4. When we gather on the fourth Wednesday of the month, our post-confirmation adult, young adult youth group alternates each month between a topical study one month and a fun fellowship activity the next month. So if you go back a couple of months, we all went to the lake, I should say this past Wednesday, to enjoy some water fun in what may now have turned out to be the last of the really hot weeks and our worst weather that we've had. The month before, we did a study on how God tests us, and we traced through Luther's detail of oratio, meditatio, and tentatio. In other words, how you first read the Word of God, then you meditate on the Word of God, and then you see that Word of God put to test in your life. That's where you really grow in your understanding of that Word. And then the month before that, in June, we went to Branson with the kids and had a fun day with them at Silver Dollar City. It was that experience that I want to draw from. Maybe, maybe you've been to Silver Dollar City or another theme park, for that matter. Maybe you've been to Walt Disney World. My wife and I, we both used to work for the Walt Disney Company, and yours truly was a tour guide at MGM Studios. That's where I really developed a fear of speaking publicly. <laughs> <clears throat> I worked in the attractions division. My job was being responsible for shuttling guests on and off the ride that I worked at, which was the great movie ride. I know I've probably talked about this before. Please keep your arms and hands within the vehicle at all times. And for the sake of our Disney employees, for the love of God, no flash photography. <laughs> See, I still got it. The great movie ride's no longer there, if you didn't know. It's at the MGM Studios, and it's housed in what is the replica of the Grumman's Chinese Theater. And I suppose they had to close it because well, their best workers went into the ministry. <laughs> Actually, just this morning, I got a text from a group that worked there in 1992 when I worked there, and they're celebrating their 35th anniversary, and I'm invited to go here in a month for a reunion, which I will not be attending. Walt Disney World, Silver Dollar City, and many other theme parks, Six Flags, Worlds of Fun, as I recall them, they all share something in common. It's a warning sign outside of each of the attractions or the rides. At Disney, it was usually one of the Disney characters that they were building the theme park around that was a part of the ride. So for example, on Peter Pan's Flight, one of my favorite rides at Disney that I will not again wait four hours for. The last time we went, we waited that long for it. There would be a cutout of Peter Pan or Captain Hook saying, you must be this tall to ride the ride. Or you have to be such and such an age or weight limit or something like that in order to get onto the ride. Remember, please keep your arms and hands within the vehicle. You have to be big enough to be on the ride. See, the goal was the safekeeping of people. We wanted people at the theme parks to have a good time. And key to a family-friendly, theme-oriented experience was that everyone got to go on a ride with enjoying the ride, getting off with their senses delighted, their imaginations stirred, and of course, with all of their body parts intact. That helps. Anything less than that usually will make the evening news and makes for a disappointing family vacation. I know the Baxter County Fair was just here. I gotta tell you, the rides that they had going on at that, we walked in from the backside of the Midway, and my first comment to my wife was, seeing the backside of the one ride that went around and around like this was, I ain't riding that. I don't care how big I am. I'm probably big enough, and that thing doesn't look like it's big enough to hold me, especially when they put it up and take it down and put it up and take it down over and over. See, if anybody got hurt, it would be a total failure. There'd be no enjoyment, nobody would have any fun, it would be a disaster, like I said, that would be newsworthy. Just like a theme park warning on a ride, God gave his people Israel a warning as they stand on the banks of the Jordan River. 
surveying the land of Canaan that God had delivered them to so very long ago. Picture a cutout of Moses, God's leader of Israel, going over instructions with the people of Israel. You must be this tall to enter the land of Canaan. That's not exactly how it went. And yet he did give instructions. He did give warning. Really, the whole book of Deuteronomy is sort of a warning like this. Here's what I would have you do. Here's what you shouldn't do in this land that you're going in to possess. You know, if you look at your English Bible, it's funny, even the section heading over the passages that were read for today's text are Moses' instruction to God's people. It reads, Moses commands obedience. Obedience to Moses' authority? Yes, but... It's obedience to Moses' authority because Moses is under the authority of God. Moses speaks these words on behalf of God. Moses is literally speaking God's word to the people of Israel, and it's a word of warning, and it's a word that demanded their obedience. Note in verse 2 that the Lord makes clear these are his words, not Moses's. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. They're the commandments of God that Moses is delivering. They're the expectations that God has of his people. So what exactly did God expect of these people from Israel? What were the rules and the regulations that were necessary for them to take part in the experience that God had planned for them in this promised land? Well, it's called the great Shema. That comes from the Hebrew imperative command verb, ha, uh, ya, oh my gosh, I've got it written down here and I can't spit it out here. I'm doing English and I've got to go to Hebrew on you. Shema Yitzrael, hear. It's an imperative command verb. Now, O Israel, listen. You heard Jesus do the same thing in the gospel today. Listen, hear what I'm about to tell you. What Jesus did in the gospel lesson was he commanded that the people would not do those things that were in their heart. Jesus was speaking consistently with our God, in fact, in the gospel today. Consistent with our God and the words that he would command to the people of Israel. What are they to listen to? What are they to shema to? To the statutes and the rules that I'm teaching you. And do them. God, like our Father, didn't want His people to simply hear His words. He wanted them to listen to them, to do them, to live them and obey them. You folks with kids, especially when you take kids to a theme park, you know what I'm talking about here, right? Stick with me, kids. Make sure that you're always in eyesight of me. Don't just hear what I said. Listen to what I said, which means do it. Honor it. Prove to me that you are listening and understanding. God, through his servant Moses, makes this point in verse 1. Do these things that you may live and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. God is serving his people by bringing them into the land, and then he's calling upon them to serve him in return by being obedient to his word. God's people of old didn't get to make up the rules they wanted for themselves any more than people today get to make up any old rule that they want for themselves, like, for instance, at a theme park. Can you imagine the chaos that would ensue if people got to make up their own rules at theme parks, places where they go for enjoyment? Actually, I can. I worked at Disney. Remember I told you? It's a theme park that gets a pretty good cross-section of people from all over the globe. And I can tell you for sure what would ensue if people were given the opportunity to live according to their own rules. I've personally borne witness to stories and things, crazy things that people have done and that they'll get involved with. You can't make some of this stuff up. Let me let you in on a secret. Disney has their own sheriff on site who offices on the second floor of Main Street, USA. And there's a holding cell for people there as well, because all kinds of problems come up when people make up their own rules. I've heard of all manner of sinful behavior, but like I said, I've also been firsthand witness 
One of my favorites is the woman that tried to assault the man with a sword from Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> Ever been stabbed with a plastic sword? This guy was. It's no wonder Moses tried to beg off leading God's people. People are hard to lead. Moses' own words from Exodus 4, Oh my Lord, please send someone else. We need God to be our God. We need the Creator. We need our Redeemer to teach us what matters. We need Him to give us His rules and His statutes. We need His guidance so that others would see how we've been guided, as it says in Deuteronomy. And we as His people need to follow His Word. We need to not just hear it, we need to listen to it and live according to it because His ways are best. And He delivers that Word to us in the form of His moral law. He gives to each of us, His children, His fatherly oversight. And we, in turn, act as His obedient children. What service does He demand? Nothing more than follow His Word, live according to His ways. He knows what's best for us. And it's really not, excuse me, it's not really service when you think about it. You could call it simply obedience to his word. But obedience is greater than simple service. It's an acknowledgement of God as our God and us as his creatures. It lets God be the creator. It lets us be his creation. It honors God when we live according to his words and not our words. Remember I talked a little bit ago about Moses' authority. God has authority over Moses. Moses delivers that on to the people. God has given authority to parents as well. A fourth commandment of his moral law, you may remember, honor your father and your mother. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do listen to our father and our mother. We honor them, we serve them, and we obey them. And Luther in the fourth commandment says it's a far higher thing to honor someone than to love someone. Because honor includes not only love, but also modesty, humility, and a submission to a majesty hidden in them. Luther expanded it on the large catechism and shares with us that it references and understands that God has majesty over us as creator. And we, as his creation, serve him best and acknowledge him as God when we follow his word and honor it serving him gladly. King David, you know, the one who wrote our intro it for today, Psalm 51, wrote another psalm, Psalm 40. In verse 8, he said these words, I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. Moses himself, the deliverer of these words, the writer of the book of Deuteronomy, also wrote two psalms, Psalm 1 and Psalm 90. Hear what he wrote in Psalm 1, verses 1 to 6. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers." The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. The way of the righteous has been given in God's statutes and rules, and they're still in force today, you know. They weren't just delivered to the people of Israel as they stood on the banks of the Jordan. You know them as the Ten Commandments, God's moral law. We serve the Lord gladly when we obey these commands, when we honor the law that He's given to us. We show that God's laws are greater than our laws, and we obey the First Commandment by honoring them. But as I teach my, son, or my confirmation age kids, in order to break any of the other nine commandments, you always have to break the first one and make yourself the God to decide what laws you choose to follow when you ignore God's law. Do you honor God's law? 
Do you honor it? I'm not sure about the rest of you, but I'd probably be a liar if I told you that I was always in obedience to the will of the Lord. I'd even be more of a liar if I told you that I did it gladly at times. You know, laws are made to be broken. But the truth is, is that God's will is clearly spelled out in his word. God knows exactly what we need to do because it is best. And it's not always an easy word to obey. His will and his commands are not always something that I undertake with great joy and delight out of service and honor to my God. Help and support my neighbor in every need? Had an opportunity to do that this last week. And all I could do is grumble about how it took more than half of my day that I wasn't planning. Forgive and love as I've been forgiven and loved by my God? Heck no. Why would I do such a thing? Lead a sexually pure and decent life in all that I say and do? Honor, serve, cherish, and obey the authorities God's put over me? It seems at every turn I struggle with these laws that God's given to me, and it would be fair to say that I never do them gladly out of service and honor and reverence to my God. And this was just a small sampling, a quick glance through the catechism. I find very quickly that I resonate with Paul in Romans 7 as I lament my inability to serve the Lord gladly. Not even begrudgingly do I serve the Lord. I have the desire to do what is right, Paul says, but not the ability to carry it out. I do not do the good that I want, but the evil that I do not want, that is what I will keep on doing. Paul goes to the same place in Romans 7 that I'll take you this morning on this little ride. Paul says, thanks be to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And brothers and sisters in Christ, I do have good news for you today. There is one who served gladly, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God who bore in himself the burden of serving that we so easily and willingly neglect. Jesus served gladly, as he said in Mark 10, 45, even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus' service was in fulfillment of God's laws and commands, and he did it faithfully and gladly, and he did it on behalf of you and me, people who couldn't do it for themselves. This is a ride that I love to be on. It's one that gives me joy and hope. It's one that I've been admitted to through the waters of holy baptism, and it makes me glad that our God has served me and that our God has served you. Today, I ask that the LWML banner be put up because of the theme, Serve the Lord with Gladness. And you'll see here shortly, as we install a deaconess for human care, that there are often opportunities for service that in some times and some places go neglected. You don't have to be a church worker to obey words of God and to serve neighbors, to pattern your life after the service that Jesus has given. You can do it in your marriage and with your next door neighbors. Out of reverence for our God, learning that Christ has served you by serving God gladly. And we can do the same, as you've done for the least of these, my brothers, you've done it to me. And as you serve others, I hope it makes you glad to serve others. That you see a little reflection of what God has first done. And to recognize the love that God has for his creation. It reminds us of why this must be shared and preached and lived out gladly. And why we might endeavor to share it with others, living within the boundaries of God's will and God's ways. Moses put it this way, share it with your children and your children's children. If we are the children of the Lord, it's to be shared with the world then, if God has created us all. And then it reminds us of why God would share it with us, as Peter writes in his second epistle, chapter 3, that none would perish, but that all would reach repentance. Repentance comes when we look into the mirror of God's law and we learn how far short of it we've fallen. 
which turns us away from ourselves and turns us towards our God seeking his help. Where we're reminded that Jesus, his son, was sent so that you and I could live. Who else has a God like we do? One who, as it says in Psalm 145, is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Who has a God like we do, who gives to us his holy word, his holy ways, and most importantly, his holy son? Our God holds nothing back when it comes to you, his treasured possession, his modern Israel of today, as he leads us through the wilderness of this world up to the banks of the Jordan as we see the future that he holds for us, a land, a home, as it says in John 14, 2, Jesus' words were, I go to my Father's house to prepare a place for you. Would I have told you so if it wasn't so? He has a place prepared for us. In service to us, he's given of himself to encourage us. In his service, he encourages us to serve him gladly by living according to his words, living for one another, for he is indeed near to each of us in this life and even into the life everlasting. Remember I said earlier about going to a theme park, that the goal of going there, the goal of them having rules and regulations was so that you would exit the ride and the park at the end of the day with your senses delighted, your imaginations stirred, and of course with all of your body parts intact. I would say the same thing about the laws that our God gives to us and the word that was preached by Moses so that you could leave this life with your senses delighted, your imaginations stirred, and your bodies raised from the dead to life everlasting. I'd take that over any theme park experience any day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, guard your hearts, guard your minds, and keep you in faith in Christ Jesus, our Lord, to life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to please stand as we join together and confess our common faith in the triune God using the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the installation of our deaconess, and I'll invite Andrew Gates to come forward. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, according to the church's usual order, Deaconess Andrew Gates has been called to the office of Deaconess of Human Care here at Redeemer Lutheran Church. This office has been established in love by the church to support the office of holy ministry and to assist the faithful in their God-given vocations. Hear the word of God concerning this office, first from St. Paul in Colossians chapter 3. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, 
holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all, put the, above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Hear also the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, recorded in Matthew chapter 20. Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and give his life as a ransom for many. Those same words you heard in the sermon this morning. So now I address these questions to you, Andra. Do you believe and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments to be the inspired Word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Yes, I believe and confess the canonical scriptures to be the inspired Word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice. Do you believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, the Nicene and the Athanasian creeds as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures? And do you reject all the errors which they condemn? Yes, I believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds because they are in accord with the Word of God. I also reject all the errors they condemn. Do you confess the unaltered Augsburg Confession to be a true exposition of Holy Scripture and a correct exhibition of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? And do you confess that the Apology of the Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the Schmal called Articles, the Treatise on the Power and Primacy of the Pope, and the Formula of Concord, as these are contained in the Book of Concord, are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith? Yes, I make these confessions my own because they are in, court, in accord with the Word of God. Do you solemnly promise faithfully to serve God's people in your office in accordance with the Holy Scripture and with these confessions? Yes, I promise with the help of God. Will you, trusting in God's care, seek to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and adorn the gospel of Jesus Christ with a godly life? Yes, with the help of God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you've heard the confession and solemn promise of Andrew Gates called to the office of deaconess of human care in this church. I ask each of you now in the presence of God, will you receive her, showing her fitting love and honor, supporting her by your gifts and fervent prayer? If so, then say, we will with the help of God. The Almighty and most merciful God strengthen and assist you always. Andrew, are you ready and willing to assume this office and work? Andrew Gates, I install you to the office of Deaconess of Human Care at Redeemer Lutheran Church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand as we join together for prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and most merciful Lord, by your Holy Spirit, you have given your people diverse and singular gifts. We thank you for providing faithful women in your church to assist the office of holy ministry and to support Christians in their vocations. Grant your Holy Spirit to Andra, adorn her with wisdom and power from on high that she would serve faithfully in her work to the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God, as you chose Phoebe, Dorcas, and other women to assist in the work of the apostles and to serve in works of love, so have you chosen Andra to be a deaconess in your church. Grant her grace and strength that in her labors of love and by her good example, she may serve you faithfully to the glory of your name and to the help of those in need and to the everlasting benefit of your church. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Andrew, go in peace and joy. The Almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and bless and strengthen you in faithful service, gladly in his name. Amen. Welcome to the staff. So I was thinking about this this morning. Do you have your Bachelor of Science in Nursing? Yes. Yeah, so you have BSN as part of your title. You have Deaconess as part of your title. You're working on your doctorate, so you'll be Dr. Deaconess, yes. Andrea Gates, BSN. Our organist, our director of parish music, has DPM in his title. He was part of the Boy Scouts of America, BS of A. You have a BSN. I guess that just leaves BS for me. <laughs> It's not that. <laughs> Lord bless you. I'm glad to have you here. Thanks be to God. That you're here. Another quick reminder that we will have a uh, we'll have a reception for Andra and her husband Gary in the fellowship hall between services today. I hope you stick around for that. We continue with the prayers of the church. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the gift of the Holy Spirit at work in the word of truth, that by his direction we would not stray from the way of God's commands, nor forget the wonderful blessings he's given to us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for preachers of the word, that the Lord would remember him in kindness and strengthen them for faithful service. And thanks for sending a deaconess into the harvest field here at Redeemer Lutheran Church in Andra Gates and that the Lord would continue to send new laborers into his harvest and prosper his law and promises throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For all pastors and teachers, parents and grandparents, and teachers of the faith, authorities established by God, that through them we would grow in wisdom and knowledge of the Lord's love in Christ, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For all who bear public office, that God would give to them wisdom, courage, and integrity, and for our nation, that God would destroy and hinder in our common lives whatever is not pleasing to him, and would prosper all that is in accordance with his will, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who are in need of health, healing, and mercy, including those named on our prayer list on our bulletin today, and those we list before you in our hearts and minds, O Lord, that you would strengthen them with your word of grace, and, look, and that they would look to you for comfort in the midst of suffering and pain, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for all those who come to the sacrament today, that by receiving Christ's true body and blood in this supper, they would remember and proclaim with joy the salvation that he has accomplished for us by his death and resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we offer you our thanks and praise for your servants that have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors. Bring us with them to the unspeakable joys of your new heaven and new earth at the day of our Savior's glorious appearing. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all those for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now as we collect our gifts and offerings to the Lord. Also at this time, I'd like to ask you to please fill out the fellowship cards located in the pew in front of you. Um, they're double-sided, one side for guests and visitors, the other side for our members. Place them into the offering basket as they're passed down your aisle so that we can gather them up and properly acknowledge your presence with us in worship today. Thank you.
Please stand as we continue by singing the offertory. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation, call on the name of the Lord. I will <coughs> to the Lord. Now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh, and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, the name of the Lord, now in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created, and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us, by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. 
This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all always. Amen.
word of dismissal for those unable to approach the altar this morning. Now may this true body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the one true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace and joy your sins are forgiven. Amen. Please stand as we continue by singing Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let everyone proudly his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth with joy, with shouts of thanks, giving. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us to the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Um, um, amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn number 924. Once again, a warm welcome to uh, each and every one of you, our guests and visitors and our members alike. I know it's a Labor Day weekend and it's a time when people may be traveling or, or uh, going to visit family or doing something maybe recreationally. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here today and to be able to serve you in word and sacrament, uh, gladly to serve you in word and sacrament. I've, that last uh, verse of the hymn that we just sang, glad you're summons to obey. Um, we serve the Lord gladly. Uh, even when it's uh, vacation time for the rest of the world, we make sure to take a time out and, um, and partake of the word and the sacrament, which gives to us faith and life uh, everlasting. A couple of quick announcements. Um, first and foremost is uh, please be sure to stick around. 
Um, Andra and Gary, I'm going to have you guys maybe um, in the narthex area out here just outside the doors on the way into the fellowship hall. You guys are welcome to greet them on their way in and, um, and share your greetings. I think I put something in the bulletin um, about their arrival. And uh, while she said no gifts, please, but just give us your advice on things that you enjoy, places to go, doctors, um, you know, barbers, uh, hair cutters, nail salons, breakfast place, lunch place. What are your favorite activities? I hope you guys have followed through on that and have something to share with them. Um, please share it with them on the way in and then we'll have them come in and we'll have a word of blessing. Um, if you wanna grab your cake, or I think there's some cupcakes too, grab that. We'll have a word of blessing. Don't hold up the line waiting on me because you know that I'll be late. That's how it works, so, um, but we're pleased to have you here and we wanna make sure to make you feel welcome. So um, thanks be to God for you guys being here. Um, also, a couple of quick announcements. This, while well, it's a short week, will be a busy week. Um, this Wednesday, um, we'll be having the, uh, the funeral services for our member uh, Gertrude Dunlop. Um, those will be at two o'clock. There'll be a short reception immediately following the funeral before uh, we dismiss from here and go to Kirby's Tucker Funeral uh, or, or Cemetery um, for internment. Um, she's only got a small group of family coming from Wisconsin, and I'm certain there will be some of her family members from here at the church that are part of that funeral as well, so I wanted to make, sure, make you aware of that. Um, we probably won't get the, the phone blast out until um, Tuesday, is my guess at this point, so I just didn't want to let that go unannounced here in church so that you guys were not aware of it. Also on Wednesday, that'll be a busy day, um, we have the grades 6 through 8 confirmation orientation at 6 p.m. in room B. That's for uh, kids that are in sixth through the eighth grade and their parents. Um, we'll keep the uh, back doors of the church open on the far side over there. Um, Kathy gave me uh, a notice to share with you. She said the wrong date for the church garage sale was listed in this month's newsletter. It was listed as, uh, or it was listed um, incorrectly. The proper date um, is Thursday, October 3rd. You are to bring in baked goods from nine until noon. And then the sale days are Friday, October 4th, and Saturday, October 5th. Um, and she said they are open tomorrow for intake of uh, goods that you'd like to share or get cleaned out of your place so that they can turn around and sell them, uh, make a little bit of money to serve our community with that. So they will be open tomorrow, laboring on Labor Day, right? All right. Um, last but not least, uh, I have a letter in my hot little hand here that I mailed out early this week. And uh, I'm going to give you a portion of that letter. Um, this is a response to the members of Messiah Lutheran Church in Hayes, Kansas. Um, after thanking them for hosting us on a visit, uh, I wrote this and I'll share it with you. Proper consideration of a divine call includes not only my own pastoral evaluation of the calling church and of my present charge, but also personal self-examination and introspection. These things, coupled with the guidance of God's Holy Spirit, lead the decision. I'm thankful for the opportunity to step back from my present call to Redeemer as I considered your divine call to Messiah. I have prayed for clarity in this process and I know there have been many prayers lifted up from members at both congregations for which I am grateful. At this time, I must respectfully decline your call to serve as senior pastor at Messiah. In the so now the word's out. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it is a gut-wrenching thing um, to have to think that stuff through and um, to go meet with people. And as I shared with them when I was there, you always have to tell someone no. Um, in this case, I've shared a no with them and I'm staying here. Um, what I would ask is that you continue in your prayers. I know many of you have been faithfully praying, but that you would continue in your prayers that the Lord would raise up workers in his harvest field. Um, they're uh, hoping for someone. Um, and I told them when I was with them, the Lord's got their man picked. Um, it wasn't me in this case. Um, my former congregation that I took a call to come here from in Central City remains vacant um, since I've been with you. Um, it's four years, and that's a long time to go without uh, a pastor in place, but that tells you sort of the, the sort of um, desperate state of affairs in our synod. So, um, you know, that's another thing. If you're, if you're interested in the idea of the ministry, um, I was not... Uh, I went as a second career guy. I had many classmates who went as retirees um, in, a, uh, in a different style of program that they called certificate program. So um, if it's something you've ever considered, I'd be happy to visit with you. And um, I pray that you would consider it in much the same way that I did. You know, instead of saying, why me? Why not me? Why wouldn't I do something like this? So um, I know it, it messes with our comfort zones. 
um, and it messes with uh, what we plan for ourselves and our lives, but sort of in line with the, with the sermon today. We follow the Lord's word um, where he leads us, and um, he provides. So we pray that he provides. I pray that your prayers would continue for the folks in Messiah and Hayes. Um, they're lovely people, and they deserve a pastor, and I pray the Lord would give them one. So the Lord be with you. Have a blessed day and week in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs>